My name is Ryan Phelps and I will be going over a quick introduction to simple pivot tables. Excel 2016 is a fantastic tool and one of the ways that it's really useful is for counting the occurrence of certain um, values within a large data set. That's what we're going to look at right now. In summary, we're going to look at pivot tables for both categorical variables and numerical variables. There are some slight differences. Um, the results that we're going to generate using the pivot tables include count, percent of total, and cumulative percent. To wrap things up, we're going to go over a little bit of an introduction into pivot table functionality and presentation. We're going to look at the outline format, which is really uh, a nice change from the default. We're also going to look at the ability to click and drag the organization of the pivot table and um, manual as well as automatic update of the information that the table references. So let's get started. What we're looking at here is a hypothetical grade book where I have a bunch of students and a bunch of uh, false work in order to come up with this grade. And suppose that you had something similar or something very different where you wanted to count the occurrence of a certain value within a row. Uh, there are a couple of ways to begin the pivot table. One way is to create a table, uh, simply insert table. The problem with inserting a table is uh, unless you're educated on how to work with tables, they can be a little bit tricky. The nice thing about using a table to build pivot tables off of is once you know how to work with a table of data as opposed to just a worksheet of data, once you know how to do that, um, when you add data, the pivot table range will update automatically. Um, we're going to use the pivot table more of just a shortcut for getting information out of a table, so I will cancel this and we'll take the more simple approach, which is just to say insert pivot table. Um, double check your range to make sure that you have indeed captured all of the data that you intend to. And in this case, we look good. And then as far as the location, I'm going to choose the existing worksheet. And I'm going to choose a location right here next to the data. And then say OK. And what you get is this pivot table field and all of the pivot table options. If I click outside of the pivot table, I lose all of this. And that can be disorienting even after we have a table here that will happen no big deal just click click back in to the pivot table so we're going to start with a categorical letter grade and i'll show you how this works so again you could scroll through or even sort the data and count how many a's b's and c's you could also write an if function uh, count if in order to determine how many a's b's and c's but uh, this will represent a really handy alternative. So let's grab that categorical grade um, column there and um, what, what it instantly generates is a list of all the grades within uh, the column N. Next step is to grab the grade and pull it over into the calculation area. Um, the default in this case is count but under value settings I just clicked on count, let's close out of here, clicked on count and then clicked on value settings. There are a whole options, uh, there are a whole lot of options of things that you can calculate from the data. I'll say okay. Um, I'm going to double click here and just rename this count and say okay. Now this is a nice little table except you've got this row labels heading and it's not great. Um, this comes from the default setting for pivot tables. So if we go to design and instead for report layout, if we go to outline, then we get the actual heading of the column that we were looking at. So now Excel has instantly returned a count of how many A's, six A's in this case, 28 B's, etc. And this is great information. Um, it may be even more important and uh, a little bit cumbersome to try to figure out what the percent breakdown for each of these is. We can add that to our table simply by grabbing the same column heading and dragging it over to the calculation area. Um, if we click on count and click on value settings, it's kind of hard to find, but you can go in here and click on show values as. And instead of no calculation, again, 
we are going off of count. Instead of no calculation, we're going to go ahead and look at percent of grand total. I will also change this to a percent heading and say OK. And now we can see clearly that 6As represents 9.38% of this class. I'm going to go in here and try to center that. It's going to bother me. OK, now this is nice as well. And if we highlight, for example, A through C, this is a desirable place. To have students fall in this range, we can see down here at the bottom that the sum of this is 81.25%. But what if we wanted a running cumulative percent? We can also do this within the same table. Let's grab the grade and bring it down once more. And in this case, we're, we're clicking again on count of grade and value field settings. And in this case, show value as. We're going to go and scroll down. Again, a lot of options here you can use. We're going to look at percent running total in and say OK. Now we have this nice little table here. Zooming out a little bit, uh, we can see that indeed 81.25% of all of the students got at least a C. So that's all fine and good for a categorical variable. How would we go about doing the same thing for our number grade? Uh, let's take a look at that. So once again, insert pivot table. Double check the uh, double check that all of the data that we want have been highlighted. In this case, it's not clear, so I'm going to go ahead and just click on the student, hit Control Shift right and down, and then click on the button again. Existing worksheet. I'm going to put this right below our previous table. Click the button again and say OK. And here we have our pivot table field. So this time, instead of grabbing the categorical uh, letter grade, which is this last one, I'm going to grab the numerical, numerical grade and drag it down to rows. This is going to give me every value for a grade. And as I do it again in the Calculate column, in this case, you can see it's given me some. We don't want some. We want to know how many. So I'm going to go in, click on Sum of Grade, click on Value Field Settings, and say count OK. Now, here's the problem with numerical data is it's going to give us a count for every grade value. This is easy enough to fix. Right click on any of these uh, values in under row labels and say group. In this case, um, it's going to give you an automatic minimum and maximum. If you unselect these, you can make your own minimum and maximum. I think I'll start at uh, 0.5 and go all the way up to 1. And if we do that in integrals of 0.1, that will demark the grades for us. So I will say OK. And it's going to collapse this down to our desired grades. Comparing these two, you can see that the order is different. We can often vary the order simply by clicking on this little arrow and saying sort instead of from smallest to largest, in this case largest to smallest, and now the numbers will correspond beautifully. Uh, also, this is that default um, layout, so we're going to go to Design and Report Layout and choose Show an Outline. Okay, now let, down to add the other two. So we will just grab this and drag it down here again, and go in, click Value Field Settings, and we will go to show values as percent of grand total and type a percent symbol and say OK. And then here we will go and click on value field settings and show as a percent running total in and type in cumulative and say OK. And now you can see that we have indeed looked at how to generate a very simple one variable pivot table with lots of results in just a little bit of time based on both a categorical and a numerical uh, variable. Finally, in terms of uh, pivot table functionality, um, it may be in certain cases that you want to change the order of these. If you go, if you right click and choose pivot table options, There is an option f under display for classic pivot table enables dra dragging of fields. 
OK, and then you can simply grab the field that you want and click and drag. Finally, in terms of updating, now one thing that's tricky with pivot tables is that you might have gone through this process and then, for example, let's take a look, six A's. Let's suppose that a student dropped the course and that student had an A, so I'm going to try to find an A student here. Here's an A student, and I'm just going to delete them. Now, if we go back and look at our pivot tables, lo and behold, they still say six. And even if we save and close and reopen, it'll still say six. So to manually update this, we can go to Data and say Refresh All, and everything is up to date. Um, now, what else can we do? Um, we can actually right-click and go to pivot table options and under data we can say refresh data when opening the file and this is good for something that you're going to continually use where you will continually reference your pivot table and say OK. Well, uh, incidentally, if you want to know how I got all these uh, categorical variables, pause and you can check out this nested if function. Um, Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.